In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint this Untamed Beast model from the new box game from Games Workshop, Warcry. Now, this is a little more complex than some of the other models, so make sure you watch all the way through just to get all the tips and techniques. If this is your first time visiting the channel, then I'd be really grateful if you consider subscribing. The first bit we're going to do on this untamed beast is probably the biggest part or the biggest area of the model which is the flesh. So I'm starting off with some Kislev flesh and I'm just going to coat this uh, all over. Now you can see again it's a Zenthal uh, highlight as well so we primed in black and then a Zenthal of white from above. So we're just going to put this all over those flesh areas. Just work in. Don't put it in too thick, the xanthal coat will do a lot of the shading work for you. Uh, we'll use a wash to bring out any other areas. So just take your time and put this on all the flesh on the model. And then once you've done that, we'll give it a little shade. So I'm just going to finish this off and then when we come back, we'll go to the next step. Once we've got a nice all over coverage of Kislev flesh, I'm just going to take some Reichlin flesh shade and just put this all over uh, the flesh areas, work it into all the little nooks and crannies. Um, what we'll do then is once we've put it everywhere, before we move on to the next uh, kind of section, I'm just going to dry the brush off a bit and just take some of it away from these bigger areas. And we'll just make it easier to, to highlight later on. So just work it in. Nice and straightforward. This is, it's not thinned down, it's straight from the pot. Cover off all these areas. Work it in. Take the paint off and then we can just work away some of these fuller muscle areas. Like I said, just to make it easy to highlight later on. Make sure you've got a decent line all the way around where all the strapping is. And make sure that you get some in there as well at the face. You can be a little bit messy at the face. Uh, just make sure it gets into those eye slots and that neck. And then finally the hands. Just make sure you work it in between all the fingers there. And the same here and then just let that dry off completely and the next thing we'll do is go back in and just highlight up with the Kislev flash we used for the base so make sure you haven't missed any areas we'll work it down in there I'll just finish off the legs and then we'll come back when the Reichland flesh shade is dry, we're going to go back in with the Kislev flesh. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to highlight just these muscle volumes. So just leave the Kislev flesh in the recess. Work on these muscles coming over here. Just taking a bit of care there to make sure that the nipple is left in view. I've just made a little mistake there, so I'm just going to move that away with some water and head back in there with the brush. So again, get as close to that line as you can uh, of the leather without actually uh, going up to it, and this just keeps that flesh shade in there. Got the bicep here, let's just get all of that. 
And we've got some just here as well, a little bit in the elbow there. This is the most predominant part, so make sure that this bit is looking the best, because it's the first bit part that your eye is drawn to. Okay, so just work your way around the model, picking up all the other bits of highlights, make sure you get the fingers, uh, and then we'll come back for the final highlight of the skin. The last highlight on the flesh is going to be uh, flayed one flesh. Now this is quite a bit brighter than the Kislev flesh, so it's going to be quite stark until it dries. Make sure that it's, you've got a little bit of water, and we're just going to look at popping this on those parts of the muscle that really really jump out and will really catch the light. So just take your time, find those bits that you think are going to jump out, obviously the face. We've got the, the thigh here. So just work your way around got this scar as well so we'll pop a little bit on there now I'm using this quite sparingly um, and that is because of the starkness of the colour but if you do make a mistake it's okay you can just go back in and use the Kislev flesh to tidy it up so if we have a look at the the hand we'll just get some really thin lines there just to highlight the fingers and then you can use the shape of the of the hand to get those other highlights on there and down the thumb. This part here is mainly in shadow, so I'm just going to leave that with the flayed one flesh. I might just put a little bit on the hand and the fingers here, which are going to hit the light. And also maybe just a an edge on that bicep there. Okay, and with that the flesh is complete. The next bit I'll focus on is the strapping and for this I'm going to use Wildwood uh, contrast paint. So we've got this strapping here so I'm just going to paint the Wildwood over it. Just be really careful when you get to the juncture with the skin that you've just painted. Just take your time and you can already see that the wildwood is starting to settle really nicely in those recesses. Just work it in there gently, take your time. Okay, so that's the first arm strap uh, done. So we're going to do the second arm strap in here and then I'll finish off the leg straps. Again, take your time when you reach the skin. The reason I'm leaving that part there lighter is I just want to go in with a different colour paint to give a little bit of uh, different colour in the final rendering of the model. Just take your time and work it in there. Okay, so the last two little bits we've got, uh, we've got the strapping on the back of the legs. So again, you can pop this in, you can be a little bit more, a little quicker, I guess, with this bit, because it's not uh, so much of an issue in terms of the skin around it. And also just up in here like that, and that's quite dark, and the Xenthal Prime uh, has helped with that as well. So there we are, we'll just let that strap in dry, and then we'll have a look at the boots. The next bit I'm going to do is the bone. Now I want a bit of variation in some of the bone colour, so I'm just going to base it in different light tones. So if we have a look at the arm weapon, I'm going to use Morgast bone to just base this bit. Now this might take a couple of coats on the underside, because as you can see with the Zenithal Prime, it's totally black there. And I'm painting quite a light colour onto a, onto a dark colour. I'm going to leave these fang sections because uh, I might do them in a, a different colour to again get some decent variation. 
going through there um, and in terms of the more gas I'm also going to paint uh, these parts or the bones that are attached to the greaves so just be careful with these because obviously we've been there with um, the contrast paint beforehand and I'm also going to paint the horns on the helmet So I'll go and finish the rest of the bone colour and then we'll come back and I'll have a look at the bone on the weapon that we're going to do and the skull just in there because we'll use a, a different colour to give us some variation. And once the Morgast bone is finished and it did need two coats under there, I'm going to go in with a Rakar Flesh. Um, so this is going to be for the weapon and also for the little skull just in there so this will just give a nice um, variation to show that the bone isn't all the same and it just breaks it up across the across the model so I'm putting on this fairly thin um, we'll see how it dries we may need to put another coat on we may not I'm not being too careful around the teeth I haven't decided what color I'm going to do with those yet they may be a darker color Oh, I may do them in a light colour as well. I'm going to paint over the bits of strapping so that the base is the same. I'll probably use a contrast paint over that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And just work that little bit of bone there. And again with that tooth, I'm not 100% on what colour we're going to do those yet. Um, so you can see it's drying okay so we'll see what it looks like when it has dried we're just going to finish this little skull in here a uh, bird type skull it's one of those raptor x skulls i think one of the the beasts that can come and interfere in your game so we'll just get this based and i let that on the axe dry and then we'll come back and we'll see we may give it another coat we may not so I ended up going back in with another bit of the Rakar flesh here just to give it a, a nice even coverage. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to wash um, some of the bone. We're going to use two colours for the wash. We're going to use Reichland Flesh Shade uh, and first Agrax Earth Shade. So I'm going to do this just to make sure that there's further differentiation between the bones. So I'm just putting the Agrax Earth Shade over the Rakar flesh. Now I'm not piling this on and just brushing it on gently and the reason for that is I don't want it to cover and pool too much and create too much darkness uh, on the bone part itself so you see that is quite thin still and that's going to make it a lot easier to go back and highlight it so just work it across and there's lots of little crevices on here as well which makes it really easy to find out or to, to point you in the right direction of where you should be placing this wash should be careful again like I said when you come to the skin parts the other bit that I'm going to do with uh, Agrax Earth Shade is this part here on the hand so again just brush that into there take your time when you come towards the skin but again don't pile it on so much that it just pools on the miniature and makes it really messy uh, similar as you come around here just work it in there Nice and straightforward, just take your time, fill it in there. Um, and the other place I'm going to put the Agrax Earth Shade is on the legs. But just to show you for the video, um, I'm going to use the Reichland Flesh Shade. Now I'm going to use this on the horns by the helmet. So a decent amount on there. There's some nice um, ridges in these bones. And you can see that once you get the paint on there, it really starts to fill them up. So work your paint on there. Just get in and stain that bone area and then just go and make sure that you haven't got too much in there. So if you need to wipe your brush clean of any wash, you can just put it back in and, and soak up any bits. Uh, but just be mindful of what bits are going to be in shadow. So this bit here is, is underneath, so that'll be a little bit of a shadow. 
I'm just going to work the wash into here. Uh, and the rest of the bone will have the um, Agrax Earthshade wash on it. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that and then we'll come back when it's dry. It's just occurred to me as well that I can save a little bit of time here. So while these washes are drying, I'm going to go in with some Celestia Grey and just base coat uh, this fur. So I'm just going to get Celestia Grey all over the fur. Just make sure you work it into those nooks. And be really careful when you get to this bit under here where you've got the the helmet and some wash that's still wet and I want to work this down as much as I can but as I'm kind of coming to the bottom I'm just over brushing now that means I'm not stabbing into all the nooks and the crannies I'm just brushing over the most pronounced parts uh, of the fur so just work it in there again be really careful when you come to these bits that are uh, close to the bits where you've got a wet wash just work that Celestia Grey in. So I'm just going to finish that and we'll come back and we'll wash that as well. Once that uh, Celestia Grey is dry, I'm just going to give it a wash. Uh, and the colour I'm going to use this is Drakenhof Nightshade. So this is a blue colour. Uh, so just be careful with working it in there. Don't um, throw it in too thick. We just want to get it into those recesses there. Really simple and straightforward because this will give us a nice contrasting colour to uh, all the other parts of the model and will go against the, the kind of warm skin. This is quite a cold colour for the fur. So we'll just work that in and then once we've done that we'll leave that to dry and we should be ready to do some highlighting on the bone and on the fur and then uh, this chap from the Untamed Beasts will nearly be done. Again, there's a little bit of a, a time saver. We can work uh, some of the other areas that are away from uh, the wet washed areas. So start off with this leather strapping that's holding that fur on. This is Doombull Brown. I'm just going to put that uh, down. And it's that classic thing. Take your time because uh, it can get quite fiddly. You don't really want to get any of it on the skin. Um, so just take your time. Popping that on. Put your brush in positions that make sense, that mean you're touching the bit you want to paint and it doesn't give you too much of a risk that you might overspill onto the areas underneath. So you can just see there we've got that um, nice edge there. So let's just take our time and get that painted in. I'm barely touching the model, I'm just letting the brush do the work. Um, and same on the other side. Work it in slowly, okay. And the other parts that we've got for Doombull Brown, we've got the the belt uh, just running along here. So not too much of an issue if you get uh, anything on the kind of loincloth or waist skirt there, because we're going to go back and and go over that in black anyway. Uh, so just take your time and work this Doombull Brown on. There we are, that's looking pretty good and it's starting to come together quite nicely now. Next up we're going to get the inside of the cloak uh, started. So we're going to use Bugman's Glow for this and this is just for all the insides. So again, take your time, especially when you come to those areas um, that are close to parts you've already painted. Um, let's work this part here. And again, be really careful here because you're kind of going over that edge where you've already got the Celestia Grey with the with the blue shading. You just want to take that up to the claws there. And then just come back and really carefully just get along the edge. And this is where having a, a really good quality brush um, is worth its weight in gold. So just work the Bugman's Glow in there. Some parts can be really difficult to get to, so if you can't get to them, don't push yourself too much because uh, it's going to be in shadow anyway uh, and you'll only risk getting paint over bits of the model you don't want to get it over so I'm just going to come over here now and get the paint into these areas I can reach and again you want to cover as much as you can but again don't risk ruining good work um, by trying to get paint into a spot that's 
nigh on impossible. A good rule of thumb is to just aim for um, those bits that you're going to see when you're looking at the model on the tabletop. So that's pretty good. I'm going to let that dry off a bit and I might go in with a with another coat just to thicken it up in these areas where the black undercoat is uh, is showing through. And then we'll come back and we'll make a start on the back of the cloak as well. So we're going to make a start on base coat in the cloak on the back. And what you can notice is that I've popped some of the um, Bugman's glow into the holes so that it shows the kind of skin underneath. Uh, so this is dryad bark and this is just going to uh, pull the base for this cloak. Work it around, take your time. Don't get it onto these bits where the Bugman's glow is. Just work it down to the bottom. Make sure the coverage is pretty good. Um, so let's go back in there. And there we are, that's looking really, really good. So I'll just finish off all of the dryad bark here. And then we'll come back and we'll have a look at how all our washes have dried um, before we uh, move on to the highlighting stage um, and the metallics. My washes are still a little bit wet after I've done um, the dryad bark on the back of the cloak there. So while that's drying, um, I'm going to take Corvus Black and I'm going to use this for all the black bits. So we've got the boots. And again, this will just go on fairly straightforward. Just be careful you don't hit any of that bone. Work your way around the bottom on uh, both boots. Um, we've also got the cloth. So we've got the loin cloth there. And we've also got the cloth that kind of goes uh, around the back of the legs just here and it's in there so we want to get that done as well um, take your time on the loincloth especially when you get to these bits here so it's good to have a good point on your brush because you can just pull it down through that section you don't have to worry about getting it on uh, any of the skin you've already finished so i'm going to go ahead and finish all the cloth and hopefully all the washes will be dry and we can start highlighting so things have started to dry off now so i'm going to go in and finish some of the strapping uh, now i've gone in i've given it a bit of gray here just to um differentiate this make sure i know where i'm putting this and this is a snake bite leather contrast paint so it's going to put this on you see it's a lovely browny leather color it's going to work this around and be careful not to get it on any of the bone uh, or any of the skin any of the bits that you don't want to be this color um, so straight away that's giving a real nice look just want to make sure we get uh, these bits here and these bits here so again take your time use the point of your brush for that and this is a little awkward bit on there as well which we can get uh, and just working around all the, uh, the strapping there That's gone on really easily, so that's a nice one step there. Uh, and we've just got this little bit of a, a strap here, a little knot there, a little strap. So, again, we've got some nice contrasted colours um, in what is a bit of a crowded area with lots of browns, but they kind of set themselves off quite nicely against each other. Okay, so that's done. Um, we've got one more shade, so we're going to put some null oil on the leather part and also that corvus black because what we'll find is that it'll give a really nice um shade to the corvus black before we go in and highlight it so i'm going to pop that down while i open the null oil and close the snake bite leather because we don't want any spillages um so with the null oil we're just going to pop this uh, around the boots all the black areas really um so you see just in there and take your time so you don't splash it anywhere. I'm going to get it on this uh, loin cloth going down there as well. We'll come back and add some highlights to it uh, later on. Uh, and also we want to put a little bit along this leather strapping. 
so you can see I've gone and put it in and it's probably a little thick down the middle that's not a problem all I'm going to do after I throw some null oil in there is wipe my brush off and then just bring it back to soak up some of that null oil uh, so whilst that dries then we can start to think about highlighting some of the bones so the first highlight we're going to go back to rack our flesh um, and this is just going to pick up all the raised areas on, on this bit of bone here so we've got all these nice uh, pointers where the kind of teeth go into the jaw got some nice straight lines down there so just take your time just highlight it make sure you leave the recesses you've got the agrax earth shade in there um, Let's build that up nicely. Uh, so we let that dry, and in the meantime, I'll just go and set up so we can do the other bone highlights. Uh, and for that, we're going to use a shafty bone. Uh, one thing I did while I had the null oil out was I actually went in and just placed it on the cloak as well, and that'll just give a little depth in the shadow. Now, again, don't plaster it on because if you plaster it on, it's just not going to look right. Um, and you'll run the risk of it pooling and running off the model it's just going to look really untidy so let's start highlighting the bone so we've got your shabty bone and this is uh, really straightforward we're just going to look to use the edges of the bone we're not going to reinvent any wheels we're just going to use the contours of the material we're working with so it's really easy and straightforward to get a nice kind of highlight there and of course I'm not going to worry too much about these inside bits because that's really in the darkness um, so again let's just show you that use the shape of the model and the edge of your brush just to work some highlights into this bone and remember it's just the bits that you're going to see reflect in the light just take your time. Quite enjoyable doing highlights because this is the bit you get to see um, the model start to pop. So that's um, those parts done on the greaves. Now, just really quickly, I'll show you the weapon here. So again, really similar. Where you can use the contours of the model to give you a nice hard edge, use them. Okay, because we're just working away want to keep that Agrax earth shade in the recesses, the deepest parts of the model. And again, you don't have to worry about this bit too much because that's in shadow underneath. And the last bit I want to show you how to highlight, because again, this is it takes time and patience for this because you do have to use the point of the brush for this, um, is these horns on the helmet. So whilst you can kind of follow the contour a little like that and that's effective you have then got these ridges so all you do is just paint little lines across the ridges and that'll give you a nice highlight uh, and the same underneath here We've got another horn underneath there that we can pop a highlight on and if we turn it round we can also make sure we get just pull some a line down there just to highlight it so let me show you those ridges again just on this bit here so it's just drawing straight lines down and we've got that top ridge there we can pull the brush down so just pull it across and then just work pulling the lines down okay take your time doing this but it is really effective and does really add to the overall effect uh, on the model. So the next colour we're going to use is some Screaming Skull. Uh, might use a little white scar um, and then we can finalise those bone highlights. So I decided to go with uh, white scar for the bone highlight just to um, make the model pop a bit more. I'm only really looking for those highest edges. So if we look at the ridge line here, I'm just gonna pop it on there. 
we've got that hole in there and we've got this one coming in here and we've got these ridges there uh, when it comes to the the big axe I'm just gonna work it around these areas where we've got the teeth in the bone just putting some highlights on there that'll catch some across there just in there like that Okay, so just working around all the other bones, like I said, catching the edges of all the bits that are sticking out. Um, and then we're ready to move on to the next stage and start thinking about highlighting the black as well as the cloak. So first up, we're going to highlight uh, the Doom Bull Brown, and we're just going to do that with uh, some more Doom Bull Brown. We're just looking to catch the edges of this leather but also any bits of texture just in there uh, and just any bits there where we can see uh, that it's looking pretty good um, next up we're going to do the cloak on the back so for the cloak we're going to use Gothal Brown um, now you've got a couple of options, you can either chunky highlight this into big sections but I'm just going to edge highlight the cloak. So I've just got the Gothel Brown and I'm just running it um, along the edges there, not too thick. Where I've got some folds, I'm just going to take my time and pull it through the fold there. So that gives me a nice highlight and then just work it down the edge. Okay, same for just the lower parts of the cloak and where you've got the ripped bits there as well. And once once it dries, this will give you a nice uh, subtle edge highlight. Take your time and work your way around. And I'll go back and finish that uh, in a moment. And the other highlight we're going to do is we're going to highlight the black. And to do that, we're going to use Mechanica Standard Grey. So, pretty much what we've been doing so far. So, we're going to edge, just grab onto an edge there. Be careful as you come into this area here. Just want to catch some of these raised areas. And again, I've not got very much paint on my brush. So, I don't run the risk of putting it on too thick. And that, that's the kind of thing that will take a bit of practice. But just remember that less tends to be more when it comes to highlighting. So you can always go in and, and add some more if you need to. It's going to catch that corner there. And we've got this sort of part here as well. So this is going to be a straight line highlight. So I'm just making sure I've got good brush control through there. And the last part is just the shoes. So you can see that line just across there. And then just around the front of the boot. As well. So I'm going to go off and make sure I've not missed any highlights. And we'll come back and we'll have a look at the next step. Okay, let's get on the home stretch of this model. So I've agonised and agonised over what colour to do the teeth and I'm going to go with black so we'll get some Ab Abaddon black and we're just going to go ahead and paint all of the teeth so we've got all these sharp claw bits here on this weapon now we've got the teeth along the top of this chap's axe uh, so again be really careful when you come to the joins there To make sure that we're getting tough and we're not actually painting uh, the bone underneath and we've also got the sort of uh, claw pendant just hanging there um, which we'll paint as well and we've also got these spikes um, built into the wrap so it's going to get all that done in a bad and black and once I've finished 
uh, the abad and black we'll come back for the next step with black done um, we'll get on to some of the metallics there's not much metallics they're quite organic uh, so we're going to start with some balthazar gold not too much on the brush and this is just for the this emblem here let's just follow the outline of the sculpt don't worry too much uh, if it gets dark because in that position that's going to be dark anyway let's just get some balthazar gold on these top parts because that's what's going to catch the light uh, and the other bit we're going to do in balthazar gold is just the star um, that's tied between the horns on the top of uh, the helmet so just take your time with that because it can be quite fiddly we'll go back and we'll worry about the, the rope as a last uh, last thing that we do um, we're going to pop some lead belcher on so the lead belcher is for the kind of silver bit so we've got the helmet um, we've got this little bit of uh, chain mail here so again take your time don't get it on the black work your way through um, with a helmet again take your time because we've got a lot of painted elements in here so just work it on slowly make sure you get a decent coverage and don't paint on any of the other bits and pieces you've got in there Just work your way around the helmet. Just get the inside of it there as well. Be careful not to leave any silver paint on the cloth or the fur. This is probably the fiddliest part, I think, of the miniature so far. Uh, the back side of it shouldn't be too hard, but just take your time watch out for these bone bits make sure you don't uh, paint them with the silver uh, and the other last bit of silver that needs doing is just these uh, studs which are there holding the cloth uh, not the cloth the fur part of the cloak onto the leather strapping so again, just take your time with that. So that's the metallics done. Um, the next bit I want to finish off, I want to get these black teeth highlighted. So what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, Mechanica Standard Grey as the first highlight. I'll show you on uh, this. Which one shall I show you on? Let's show you on this, the top of this one here. So we just want to run the brush uh, along the shape of the claw and don't worry if it's quite a, a thick highlight because we are actually going to highlight it again and it's that uh, second highlight that'll that'll make it pop so if we think about the uh, the teeth so we just want to pull it along there and similarly along the front so again just using the shape of the sculpt to inform where we're going to put that highlight. So just take your time doing this. Again, it's one of those things that's quite enjoyable. Uh, but the more time you take, the more patient you are, uh, the better it'll look in the long term. The next part that we're going to highlight, and this is going to be a little bit of a a thinner highlight is going to be Althuan Grey. So again, just take your time with this. And this is just going to go closer to the edge. And this is just gives the impression that um, these are really pretty sharp uh, claws that he's uh, coming at you with. So again, just take your time. Don't put too much pressure on the brush. Uh, you get really good results. We're focusing towards the end of the teeth here. So 
It's starting to look really effective. Really nice and sharp. And then what you can do with a, a last highlight there is you can just pop some skull white uh, just for right on the tips. Now, what does this look like? Literally just the tips. And use that sparingly. Okay, so that's the claws highlighted. Uh, the next little bit of highlighting we're going to do is just on that Balthazar Gold. We're going to use uh, Model Air Chrome for that. So a very little amount of chrome on the brush. And we're just going to highlight the top edges there. Uh, the next highlight we're going to do after that is going to be uh, just a little bit on the helmet, on the sharpest edges, and then what we'll do is we'll wash that with some null oil and see if we need to reapply that highlight. Just going to pop a little bit of null oil over some of the metallics, so we've got that bit there, and we've got the the helmet. So again, with the helmet, be really careful where that null oil settles. It doesn't matter if it gets into there, that's okay, because it will have a natural shadow anyway. Um, you just don't want to leave too much on the model that might run away. And this will then tell us if we need to put any more of a highlight on that face plate to just make sure that it's popping. And with that, we're nearly done. We've just got to highlight the cloak, uh, both the inside and the fur there. So to highlight the inside, we're gonna use Kislev Flesh. And this is gonna be another uh, edge highlight, not too much on the brush. We're just gonna bring it along sparingly over those edges. Oh, no, we've got some bumps there. And similarly, we're just gonna bring it along some of these edges as well, just to give a little bit of interest um, on that bit of cloak. And the last bit before we finish the model is the fur. So we're gonna do this with a little bit of an overbrushing technique. So get some Ulthuan Grey on your brush, pat it into a, a paper towel, and then I'm just gonna move it along the model, taking my time, not putting too much on, focusing on these higher areas. And it's kind of like a, a little bit of a dry brush. I just realized I missed the claws there, so that's fine. We'll just go back and paint those the same way that we did uh, all the other teeth. Just got a little bit on the front that we'd like to do. So just again, pull the brush across there. See it catches all those bits that are hanging out. Gives us a nice little highlight. And that's starting to look really good. So I'm really happy with how that's turned out. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to let that wash dry, maybe pop another little highlight on the helmet. Um, but otherwise, I'm going to base him and he's ready to go. So there we go. That's the model finished. Now, I've just given the base some Astro Granite Debris and I've given it a wash with some Athonian Camo Shade. Like I said right at the start, this model is a little bit more complex and there are a lot more stages in terms of getting it ready for the tabletop. But I hope this video has shown you how to do it. If it has, then please feel free to leave a like, and if you've got any questions, then drop me a comment down below. Now, if you would like to support the channel, there is an affiliate link in the comments for Goblin Gaming where you can get Warcry for 20% off. This is limited to the European Union only, um, and it doesn't cost you any money, but it does give me a small percentage of that feedback. So if you do really want to get Warcry, then please consider using that link. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.